All right, so here we have a uh, standard FAT PS2 here with a network adapter back there with an 80 gig hard drive in it. Modified memory card with free MC boot on it. You can look it up on Google. It's free and not so easy to install though if you don't know what you're doing. And here we also have a uh, uh, flash drive, one gig, has all the information on it to uh, install Linux on it. And then here we have standard PS2 uh, keyboard with a mouse already installed into it that's right here. I got this thing like years ago and still use it today. It's by a company called PC Concepts. Uh, yeah, I just kind of advertise them. They're probably actually out of business now, so it's not like it counts anyway. And then, of course, we have a uh, PS Last 2 connector here going in and out, female and male here, going to a box here, which is a controller that goes to USB, which also plugs into the uh, PS2. That saves up mouse and keyboard to one P uh, USB slot, leaving you with the other one so that you can run a USB drive there. And then, of course, that is running through a capture card that I got for $10 at Amazon. It's a very cheap and effective way to stop all that flickering from standard televisions so you don't get a uh, headache-inducing flicker. So here we have the Sony uh, PlayStation running in the background here on a program called Descaler. It's a free program. I definitely suggest getting it because one, it's free, and two, it works really good. Basically, if you have a capture card on your computer, you can turn your uh, computer into a TV with this program. You just get it up and running, double click the, the video that's playing, and you have a TV. An HD one, too, but it's, you have to have an HD uh, capture card to get full HD video, whereas you're not going to get that with the PlayStation anyway. So, here's the desktop of the PlayStation 2 running free MC boot with a standard uh, controller here. We're going to go down to Linux, which I have on the desktop here, and then press X. Then it'll load the, uh, the bootloader, which loads up all the files needed to run Linux. You get your little penguin up here and a little disk thing here and a loading please wait thing and yada and some clouds to make you feel happy like you're in The Simpsons right now. And uh, right now it's loading something called PS2 SMAP, which is supposed to be for networking, but there's no LAN cable hooked up to it at the moment, so it's not going to load that. Two, one, and then now it's going to auto boot. And as you may have noticed, I am shaking a little bit. That's because I drink way too freaking much coffee. Anyway. And now it's going to start up Linux in its standard text format right now. They are still working on this, I believe. And that's how I was able to install this, because somebody actually made a tutorial on how to do this. I'll probably even put the tutorial to do this uh, somewhere within uh, the video description so that you guys know how to do this yourself. Right now it's trying to find the network again, which it's not going to, because yet again it's not hooked up, so we're just going to have to wait for this to pass by. But yeah, this is all this is all actually put into a tutorial to do all this, so if you need to do it yourself, whereas it's only for the fat PS2, um, there is ones out there for the slim one, but it's also known to have a lot of issues with uh, running on the slim because the only way to do it really is through the USB drive down here, and USB on the slim PS2 is very iffy. And here's the desktop. It's very basic, more or less a blue background with a white taskbar at the bottom that more or less just gives you information about what's running right now as we're on desktop number one, where you can change it with those little arrows there to one, two, three, and four, which is really useful on a machine that only has 32 megabytes, but it's still there nonetheless. And of course the time, which is, I think, wrong right now. I think it's actually like 1.30. Anyway, clicking or right-clicking the desktop, you get all your options of what the heck to do. You have your slideshow, Dillo browser, which is basically a web browser, Xterm, which is more or less a DOS prompt. Um, XMMS music player, which is basically your Windows media player for this. Uh, Conky meter, which is a weird name for it. 
more or less is a uh, task manager and a few other things like file browser and a calculator and file editor and whatnot. Even comes with a virtual keyboard if you didn't have the keyboard because you can actually use the uh, PS2 controller if you turn on analog and use the analog stick to control the mouse, which is very strange uh, at best. <clears throat> and that's actually not part of the PS2 Linux. That's uh, the windows in the background notifying me of something. Anyway, yes, music does work. If you set it up right, you can actually mount, if you know Linux, you have to mount uh, USB drives and whatnot with the X term. That's why it's there. Uh, then you can, uh, the flash drive can be mounted. You can put things from your computer onto your PS2. Uh, this one has a 4 gig uh, file system to it all by itself. Right click the media player, go to a directory, and pick a music folder of your choice. We'll just do this one for testing. So yeah, it does work. It even has visualizations too. This is more or less the most awesome part about Linux is that it has a media player in it. It actually looks like a computer. It's more or less a proof of concept like, hey, I have an operating system on my PS2, whereas it used to cost $299 or something like that to get the uh, the, re the real operating system for this thing. Uh, this is actually more or less done free. Seeing as if you had the, uh, the hardware to do it already. So here we have all the different options here. We're going to find one in the background. Bam. Open this. And... This is like the most cool thing about this. If I could just enable it. Oh yeah, that's right, it takes a while. Basically it turns your TV into one hell of a trippy trip. Yes, that's right, I did use that term, trippy trip. Anyway. You could either watch that while listening to your music, and again, yes, it does sound a heck of a lot better than it does through these speakers right now, but again, that capture card over there only has an 8-bit audio file input. I believe it's supposed to be used for security systems and not for this, but it works anyway. And it was only 10 bucks, so why not? And then slideshow. You can actually start a slideshow, put all the pictures that you want to show to people onto a little folder called slideshow somewhere within Linux, and you can listen to music and have a slideshow of pictures run um, more or less, this is basically it. Um, it. Like I said, it's basically a proof of concept. People are still working on it, believe it or not, which is really cool for something that's kind of a kind of old now. But the whole idea is kind of awesome, in my opinion. The people who did this put a lot of work into this, so it's worth trying out. If you have a fat PS2 and the uh, and the will to want to even do all this, this took me. Uh, three days to finally figure out from start to finish. I needed a lot of help. After I got uh, help from a tutorial, I got it done within like maybe three hours. Yeah, of course, yes, it does have an internet browser. But because it's not hooked up to LAN right now, it's just going to give you an error at the bottom there saying it doesn't work. It's not a full-fledged browser, it doesn't have Flash, but for YouTube viewing, it even has a program for viewing YouTube. Which, again, I haven't had a chance myself to play yet. But I'm sure it works. If it's there, there's probably a reason for it. Alright, and then it does have a shutdown option, which you should definitely use when running Linux, because if you don't, it always starts up hell slower if you don't use this option saying that uh, the partition is dirty and it will check it, which takes a while. I haven't had that problem yet, but it could happen, so just make sure that you use the shutdown PS2 button, because apparently the person who put it together put a lot of work into making that button there, to make the shutdown PS2 button there. And that's basically it. Just wait for this thing to shut down and we're good to go. There it is. PS2 Linux.